Now we have another function that can be used to achieve the same objective and that is the string split function. That function is especially handy when we have a lot of strings concatenated together in a single column because in that case using the care index you find the position of the occurrence. Each occurrence of the delimiter would be very tedious and that's why this function is very helpful in those cases. Now this is a table value function which means it the output from this function is in terms of a table and we'll see how it actually works and why is the output in terms of a table. So let's start. To begin with, let's just see how this function works so that we have an understanding of what to expect as an output from this function. So let's write a simple select statement and what we get from this function is something called a value select value from uh, string underscore split you can see that uh, we have got a suggestion for this function so we are going to select that and now it is suggesting the syntax so it expects an input string uh, let's just hard code the input string for now and so let's just put the same value that we have over here so this is going to be opens um, let's switch off the caps lock opens adam Okay, and then what else does it expect? It expects your separator. So separator in our case is going to be a comma. That means the delimiter. And we're just going to close this off. And now let's execute this simple statement. Now what you can observe from here is that we are simply selecting from this function. And this is possible because this is actually returning a table after its execution. So we are simply in a way selecting some value from the table. The output that it is returning is in terms of a column called value. Okay, now if you just execute this function, what you would get is something open and atom. So it has successfully split up the a concatenated string in two different parts. Now, if this would have been a concatenated string uh, containing multiple substrings, then also it would have been successfully able to find out all those different parts of the string. All right, so now that we have seen how this function works, we actually need to use this not on a hard coded string value but on a column from one of our tables. So, how that can be done is again, let's write a select statement and let's use a table for now. The table we want to use is the same dq.employee table. So, now this time we want to fetch the ID from the table. So, let's fetch the ID. And then what we want to do is fetch this value which would be returned by the string split function. So let's just put value as one of the columns in the select statement from uh, let's give it our table name which is going to be dbo.employee. And now we have to perform a join with this function, which is actually returning a table as we know. So we can perform a join between two tables and in the similar way, we can perform the join of the result of this function with an existing table. But in this case, we cannot use a simple join statement. We have a different syntax to be used in this case and this is known as an apply word. Okay, so instead of using join, I'm just going to put apply. And since this is going to be a simple inner join, what we need to use over here is something called cross apply. Okay, let me put it in caps so that it's easier formatted. Cross apply and we are going to apply it on this string split function. And to this string split function, we are going to supply the columns from our employee table, the column name, which is name, right? And the separator, which is going to be the comma. Uh, and we have a column called employee ID, not employee. And that's why we have that error over there. So you can just select the right column, employee ID. So now we have successfully joined between the function, the table function and our table. And let's see if we're getting any output from this statement. So let's just go ahead and execute this. Once we execute this, we can see that we have got some output from the statement. Um, but this is all in terms of rows, as we can see here. So for employee ID 1, it has created one row for the last name. That is the first part of the concatenated string. And another row for the, say, uh, for the first name. Okay, that was the last portion of the concatenated string. Also, there has been a space introduced, which we can uh, get away with using the trim function uh, later on. For now, let's just uh, let it be like this. 
but what is our most important challenge over here is to convert these rows into columns so this is not the way we wanted it we did not want it to uh, multiply into different records for the same employee id we wanted the last name and first name to appear as different uh, columns so what we are going to do now is we are going to use another function which is going to be a pivot function and the pivot function is going to convert these different rows which have been created into columns now to be able to use the pivot function another thing that we need to add over here is a row number because based on the row number the columns would be created so row number as we know is an aggregate function and this is how you need to write it so you just put row number and then you have to define the partition by and the id uh, order by uh, clauses for this aggregate function so we are simply going to partition by uh, the employee id and order by the employee id as well okay and this is going to be simply read as row number okay so now if we run this query let's see what we're getting we will get the row numbers created so for the first extracted string the row number would be one the second part of the extracted string the row number would be two now to by identifying these different records based on the row numbers we can identify that the first row number record would be ending in the last name column and the records with the row number of two would be ending in the first name column now to use the, all this functionality the first thing we need to do is put this all inside a cte which is common table expression so that we can frame our queries easily on top of whatever logic has been performed using this query so simply use with and give it a proper name so let's call it uh, the name cte so that it just indicates what we are trying to achieve here with name cte uh, as okay and just close it over here so we now know that we have created our cte and this has the output from all these computations which have been performed so now that we have created the cde we are going to now use the pivot function on the cde and get the values arranged properly in separate columns so start writing a select statement again select we are going to select the employee id so let's just select the employee id and then the next thing that we are going to select is uh, whatever comes as the result of row number one so in square brackets one as the last name and whatever is returned by row number two as the first name from our table which is called name underscore cte and then we are going to use the pivot function pivot and brackets and what we need to select is the max of values Okay, because this is kind of a case statement as well we are pivoting so we have to write the whatever is the maximum of the value we have to select because uh, it will be selecting uh, between the value and the nulls okay so max value for a row num that we created row num in brackets one and two like it quotes as a pivot table so this is how you can use the pivot function to convert the different rows into separate columns now to execute this we have to select this whole thing together and execute and now you will see that you have got the results in the format that you wanted you have the employee id from the table and the last name and the first name as separate columns
If you're not familiar with how to use the pivot function, then there's a link above to the video that I did on pivot function. It explains on how to use the pivot function, where it can be used, the scenarios in which it can be used, and what is the syntax and the way to write the pivot function. So these were the two different ways in which you could achieve the objective of extracting the different substrings from a big concatenated string, which appears as a column in any of your database tables. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you found this helpful, then please do subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such videos. Also, please do not forget to like, share and comment on this video. Thanks again for watching the video. Stay safe and stay healthy. Goodbye.